adult uh, dependent relative visa applications attract an astronomical uh, number of refusals and that is predominantly because of two things. The first one, the rules are incredibly tough and they are incredibly difficult. Uh, to satisfy. And secondly, because those who apply do not understand the rules and they do not understand which documents they will need to submit in order to increase their chances of uh, succeeding in their applications. Uh, hello, my dearest friends. Uh, Svetlana Shlapak, the founder of UKVisaSuccess.com is here. Uh, in this video, I'm not going to explain the requirements for the application, although I do give you an overview and also I explain how you can get uh, further help uh, with regards to understanding the rules. In this video, I'm going uh, to show you the consideration process and also I'm going to um, explain to you that if uh, the decision maker decides that for some reason you do not meet um, one of the uh, essential requirements for uh, this application, either financial requirements or care requirements, this is not the end of story. They are legally obliged if they find certain elements in the application uh, to go through uh, certain steps. So in this video, I'm going to explain which steps uh, these are and also I'm going to explain how you can increase your chances uh, of succeeding in the application by engaging engaging these elements in your application. So let us begin. Uh, guys, your adult dependent relative UK visa will be granted if you meet only three requirements. The validity requirements, the suitability requirements and the eligibility requirements. It is not the purpose of this video to explain these requirements and if you would like to have a very detailed overview of uh, the rules and understand the elements of a successful adult dependent uh, relative visa application, you are very welcome to attend the online course uh, which is called How to Avoid the Refusal of Your Adult Dependent Relative uh, UK Visa Application and you'll find the link uh, to this course under this uh, video. However, it will probably be helpful if I summarize the requirements in this video as well. So the validity requirements, in order for you to meet those, in very simple terms, you need to comply with the correct procedure. The suitability requirements are all about showing that you are of a good character and also that you don't have any debts to NHS over £500, that you've repaid all the litigation costs to the Home Office if this applies and you have provided the Home Office with all the information necessary and you have provided them with the undertaking form and you have attended the interview if you were requested to do so. The eligibility requirements consist of three key components, the relationship requirements, care requirements and the financial requirements which should be met by the sponsor in this application. Most refusals unfortunately happen because adult dependent relatives cannot show that they meet the care requirements. In other words, they have difficulty showing that as a result of age, illness or disability, they require long-term personal care to perform everyday tasks and that the care is either unavailable in their country of origin, even with the practical and financial help of the sponsor, or it is simply unaffordable. But I've created this video to let you know that even if you have difficulty meeting one of the requirements, especially the care requirements, the decision makers cannot just refuse the application straight away. They have a legal obligation to take some steps. Uh, in particular, they have to take uh, two steps. The first step is to check if you engaged Article 8 of the European Convention on Human Rights in your application. Article 8, in simple terms, is your right to respect for private and a family life. And uh, once they have established that Article 8 uh, element exists in the application, they should take the second step and consider whether or not there are any exceptional circumstances in your case that would render refusal a breach of Article 8 because it would result in unjustifiably harsh consequences for you and your family. It is really important to understand that 
Uh, the home office usually refuses to accept uh, that the family life element of Article 8 exists between adult family uh, members, unless, of course, uh, they are partners. So, in other words, guys, blood ties, uh, the bonds of concern and affection that ordinarily go with them are by themselves or together not enough to prove the existence of family life uh, for the purposes of Article 8. And therefore, to establish the family a life element to establish the Article 8 in the application and the existence of family life between two adults who are not partners, you will need to show something significantly stronger than normal emotional ties. And of course, it always depends on the circumstances of each case. However, there are some universal factors that are most likely to be relevant in the majority of applications. And these factors include, but of course they are not limited to age, health and uh, vulnerability, the closeness and previous history of the family, the applicant's dependence on the financial and emotional support of the family, and the prevailing cultural tradition and conditions in the country where the applicant lives. If the decision maker establishes the existence of Article 8 elements, then they will need to assess whether there are any exceptional circumstances that would render refusal a breach of Article 8. And according to the rules, a breach will arise if such refusal would result in unjustifiably harsh consequences for the applicants, their partner, a relevant child or another family member whose Article 8 rights would be affected by a decision to refuse the application. The Home Office and case law explains that exceptional does not mean unusual or unique because all cases are unique and very many of those cases are very unusual indeed. Instead, exceptional means circumstances in which a refusal of the application would result in unjustifiably harsh consequences for the individual or their family such that the refusal would be unproportionate under Article 8. So therefore, it is important to understand uh, the term unjustifiably harsh consequences and also analyze the uh, proportionality assessment. According to the Home Office, unjustifiably harsh consequences involve a harsh outcome or outcomes for the applicants or their family member, which is not justified by public interest. And what do they mean by public interest? Well, this includes in particular the public interest in maintaining effective immigration controls. And also it is in the public interest to prevent burdens on the taxpayers and promote integration uh, through migrants. This is usually achieved by being financially independent and also being able to speak English. But this is not enough. So if you can prove unjustifiably harsh consequences, the decision maker will then need uh, to consider whether or not the refusal will be uh, proportionate. Well, it gets even more complicated with the proportionality assessments. The case law clarifies that there is no one magical single fact that will help you pass the proportionality test. Rather, unfortunately, the Home Office does not give any specific examples of where a person can unambiguously pass this test. But I decided to share one extract from their guidance to help you understand this particular element. And here is what they say. They say that where the applicant does not meet the requirements of the rules and has established their family life in a precarious circumstances, which means, for example, uh, when they have a limited leave to enter or remain, something very compelling is required to outweigh the public interest in refusal. And they continue by saying that likewise, where family life is formed or exists with a person outside the UK who has no right to answer the UK, does not meet the requirements of the rules for the entry clearance, Article 8 does not require that they be granted entry in absence of such exceptional circumstances. And there is one case, the Singh case, which confirms uh, that there is no presumption that family life does or does not exist. And it always depends on uh, the facts of the case. And the judge called it a fact-sensitive question. 
So just to summarize this video, if you intend uh, to submit your adult dependent relative UK visa application, you need to do your best to always engage Article 8 in the application. So the circumstances uh, of which case, of course, very different and it's virtually impossible to give you very specific instructions. However, you should always try to show something significantly stronger than normal emotional ties. And also you need to prove that the refusal uh, will have unjustifiably a harsh consequences for all the family members, which is also not a proportionate. Guys, and once again, if you're thinking of submitting your adult dependent relative visa application, you will benefit tremendously by attending the online course where I explain the key elements of the application. I explain which documents you should consider submitting in order to increase your chances for succeeding in the application. And also I give you very successful and unsuccessful case scenarios which will help you understand whether or not you are likely to succeed in your own adult dependent relative visa application. If you found this video useful, please share this video, give me a thumbs up because it will help other people find this information and possibly avoid the refusal. Thank you very much for watching and have an amazing week. I would like to invite you to visit this page ukvisasuccess.com forward slash more where you'll find plenty of free immigration resources explaining various immigration rules and I also invite you to subscribe to a new very very succinct and short newsletter where I'll be updating you on various changes in the world of UK immigration law and also I will be sending various exclusive invitations to the members of UK visasuccess.com community. You'll only be able to get the software if you are subscribed to this newsletter. Have an amazing week guys.